Tractors are incredibly important machines in farming. In times of war, however, these machines become the starting point for a bewildering array of armored vehicles to meet an urgent need, such as fending off an invasion or when existing stocks of armored vehicles are in short supply. A strong platform with good off-road capability, cheap, simple, and plentiful, the abundance of agricultural tractors around the world means that there is a ready supply on which to base an expedient armored vehicle. Given just how wild and varied the world of farming equipment can be, means that a bespoke conversion is often needed for each vehicle. However, there is at least one thing which almost all tractors have had fitted since World War II, the three-point linkage. If a system of armoring a tractor could be made so that it is fitted with this type of linkage, then virtually any tractor around the world could be made into an armored vehicle. It is that logic that, in February 1983, led Frenchman Victor Buffon to set about designing such a system. Hey there, and welcome to another Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. I'm your host, Wood, and today I'll be covering the steaming pile of manure that is the Buffon tractor tank. Those of you who are already subscribed, good, thank you. Those of you who are not already subscribed, consider this a warning. If you'd like to support us more directly, please consider Patreon or PayPal. It helps us produce high-quality content such as this. Attaching implements to a tractor is essential because it allows them to perform a variety of roles, from plowing fields and cutting hedges to dragging logs and spraying manure. Before World War II, there was no real international standard for how this was done. A simple drawbar at the rear was the most common solution. But between around 1919 and 1926, a British inventor from Belfast named Harry Ferguson developed a standardized linkage system for the back of a tractor, submitting several patents for elements of the idea. The three-point linkage system was simple, as all great inventions are. Two connection points at the back of the tractor on either side of the rear structure formed the bottom of an A shape. The top point of the A was attached in the middle above the back end and, thereby, any connected device, such as a plow, could be controlled in both the vertical and horizontal axes. Despite being a hundred years old, this system still sees widespread use around the world today, because it works well and is so simple it is hard to improve upon. Not only does this mean that most agricultural equipment fits most tractors, but also that there is a large supply of donor vehicles which can be turned into an armored vehicle by connecting to those points. Buffon wanted to utilize the three-point linkage as the point where he would attach what he considered a firing station, which formed the armored body and a combat area of a new vehicle, able to mount any kind of offensive firepower from rifles or machine guns to light cannons. The cab, or nacelle, was made in a single piece. The design was seen as something which could be made in advance, being a simple box with no complicated electronics or even an independent power source to be something which was cheap and simple enough to be made and put into storage until it was needed. This would offer the user a cheap and rapid means by which, in the event of war or civil unrest, tractors could be converted into armored vehicles with their three-point linkages. It was thought that this would provide an alternative or a supplement to existing armored vehicles held in reserve. Various forms or shapes for this box could be done to form either a single or double firing station and it was also possible to use this nacelle to carry food, ammunition, or other supplies that might be needed. Placing just an armored body on a tractor would cause some problems, not the least of which would be the total lack of protection on the original vehicle and driver. One partial solution to this was to provide within the design the means for attaching a second nacelle at the front of the tractor and attaching it to the first one at the back. The space between the two nacelles could then have armor plating attached to cover the unprotected vehicle and driver in the middle. Protection would still be light though. The weight of armor from the armored cab or cabs and any additional plates would significantly affect the balance and performance of the vehicle underneath. Any cab on the front would also make steering or driving pretty much impossible, as the driver would not be able to see where they were going and the extra weight would make the vehicle fall over. The design was sort of retrograde. This kind of idea was more suited to the desperate times of Allied home defense in 1939 or 40 than a serious attempt at an armored vehicle for the 1980s. The idea of using the three-point linkage was certainly an inventive one, and meant that this idea was universal and any tractor-based vehicle could use it, but it was still impractical. No independent power supply, no simple means of communication with the driver, a lack of protection, difficulty driving, instability, and built on an already slow platform, 
this design was utterly terrible. Outside of extremely limited policing work somewhere in a third world country, or as the muscle for a tribe of survivors after nuclear Farmageddon, it is very hard to envisage any potential use for this. It seems obvious that the amount of effort involved here could have simply been applied to a small utility vehicle of some description, like a pickup truck, to create a far more capable vehicle that doesn't waste perfectly good tractors. Unsurprisingly, there are no examples to date of Buffo's tractor cab armored vehicle in use around the world. And now, dear viewer, I must bail on you. This concludes another Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. Thank you for watching, and please consider to subscribing if you haven't already. Remember to comment your best farm puns down below and keep us in your sights.